And you've seen all kinds of movies, but you've never seen anything like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Hello, it's the Damien and Devlin Show, and welcome to our review of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. 1975 cult classic film that was directed by Jim Sharman and starred Tim Curry, Susan Sarandon, Barry Bostwick, and Richard O'Brien. little history of this film, it was a commercial flop when it first came out. Nobody really understood it. Theaters started playing it in midnight showings. People came and started yelling horrible things at the screen to make it funny. Then they started dressing up. Then they started talking back to the screen and starting dancing, singing along. The movie went on from being a flop to being a movie that grossed over $140 million, And that rivals, it's number two of the 1975 hits, only second to Jaws. And the audience participation has made it considered the number one cult classic midnight showing movie of all time. And I have to say that I chose this movie. Um, you might notice I'm a bit of a fan. And okay. I, I, was, uh, I was lucky enough to see this movie in 1985. I was 17 years old. And I, uh, in our hometown of Hamilton here, I got to see one of the last showings that had the full water, throwing stuff, confetti, rice, lighters, everything. It was a chaos, and I absolutely loved it. This is one of those movies that changed my life. Uh, yes, I'm one of those movie fans that say movies change their lives. I was a 17-year-old who was in the closet, and I had a lot of dark stuff going on in my life. And when I went to this movie, I didn't know what was going to happen with me. And then um, I saw a little character named Frankenfurter that was walking around in fishnets and uh, sleeping with whoever he could. And the audience loved him. And although it didn't make me come out of the closet right away, it made me feel like there might be a place for me in this world. And I think that's why people love this movie. Anyhow, I've talked way too much about it. I just wanted to give you an idea of how much this movie means to me. And I wanted to share it. He saw bits of it before, but I was kind of wanted to share it. He doesn't get cult too much. So what's your initial feeling on Rocky Horror? I'll brace myself. <laughs> After that beautiful story, I, I kind of don't want to do this right now because... I feel like I'm gonna hurt your feelings with no, my you, you be thoughts honest. That's... about it. But literally, uh, there were tears in my eyes with how bad it was. I, I I didn't enjoy it all that much. I'm sorry. No, it's that's what it is. Like that's what we do this for. You you don't have to enjoy things I enjoy and stuff like that. It's true, and I do like the fact that. It, it means so much to you. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I think that this movie is very important for people like yourself, people out there even still today that are still trying to figure out who they are and what they want to be. And I think this movie can definitely, after seeing it for in its entirety for the very first time, definitely be a milestone in that person's life when they're trying to figure out, like, who am I? Where do I belong? So I can definitely see how this affected you in such a way. Coming from me, though, I I just couldn't really bring myself to get past the stuff I didn't enjoy, if that makes sense. You know, it's funny. There's kind of a funny thing here. You don't get cult and camp, and it makes me wonder why we're friends, because I'm cult oh, wow. and camp. No, but I'm cult wow. and camp, and, like, how are we... So Here close. I am trying to be so diplomatic. No, you so are. Nice. It's awesome. But what I'm saying is, Ugh. it's just, I just wonder why we're so close. Because I am all these things. I'm culty. I'm campy. But you know what? We're not analyzing it's our It's just friend. because I can look at something, and even though I don't like it, I can see why it matters so much to people. I think that's why you like me. is because I can look at it in an objective light and say, you know what? I didn't like it, but 
this is great for others. And I don't, I don't judge it, I don't condemn it, I don't say, you know what, don't ever watch this piece of crap. I would actually advocate people to watch this movie if they're feeling like they don't know who they are and they need something to make them feel welcomed and they're exploring themselves and even their sexuality. Oh, that's, that's great, great. So, do you have any positives on this movie? I do. Um, I love the music. Uh, the music, I felt, obviously without it, this wouldn't really be much of a movie. <laughs> But uh, I really, really did enjoy the music, um, especially the one right at the beginning and right at the end, the science fiction double feature song. I, I love that song. Like that song was great. And yeah, it's an actual love theme to it is. old bad movies. <laughs> it, 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 I could definitely tell science fiction. It's I one of my totally go-to karaoke songs. I, I really enjoyed that. That kind of like lessened the impact of the movie because uh, it started right off. I did like the special effect right at the beginning too with just the mouth. All you could see was the mouth singing the song. I liked that. I thought it was Tim Curry, but this guy told me it wasn't. No, it was um, Patricia Quinn, I believe, who plays Magenta. Yeah. Richard O'Brien sings it, but I think and she does And that surprised me too, the fact that Richard O'Brien sang that because I thought it was a woman singing it. And so that's really awesome that he managed to convey that. Uh... I like Susan Sarandon. I, <laughs> well, I cool. have had a, a huge crush on <laughs> Susan Sarandon since before I can even remember, so she's always a plus in my book. And Tim Curry definitely does knock his role right out of the park. I, as much as I don't like the movie, I, I did find myself falling in love with the character. I think the way that he portrayed Frankenfurter, I feel like the way that he just had that presence. Uh, every time he was on screen, you're like, oh, I want more of him. I, I loved it, and I felt like if he were to do that role today, if he could, if like, for example, if this movie were to come out today, I feel like it would have got rave reviews, he would have got so many awards for it, because he was just excellent. That's all I really have to say about my positives. No, that's a lot of positives for somebody who didn't enjoy it that much. I agree, the soundtrack is absolutely wonderful. I find it makes the movie go by so quick. Like, I can't believe there's, like, literally a section that has, like, four songs in a row. And they're all wonderful songs that go into one another. And it's by the... You realize, oh, my God, I want to watch this again. And Well, for me. Yes, yeah, speak for yourself. Yes, speak I am, yes. Um, I, I know the movie has its limitations. Like, watching it... I have... Um, sometimes movies are more like a nostalgic thing and for me this is what that is I remember the theater experience not only have I done the theater experience but I've actually hosted the night at uh, a, a place that I, I do and that was awesome to do so I have that under my boot but I know it, it, it I guess it can be a little hard to follow if you really you know yeah. don't really get into and the movie. Where, where I just analyzed the, the movie. Where I, was the plot? That's what I have to I'm ask. I'm not saying it was a brilliant script. <laughs> I'm just it? saying. So a lot of this goes on nostalgia. Um, I love audience participation. And if you're a young person that are still going out to this, because this movie is still playing in so many theaters. Um, and yeah, I, I'm just going to commend you guys out there because I love that this has gone through generations and didn't just stop. Sometimes you have nostalgic movies that just die early with a generation. This one keeps going and, and I love meeting new people who are just discovering it. And uh, yeah, and I and I, I like what you said about like you understand its cultural importance and for people who are on the outside of things. I could see why you mentioned this movie was a flop in 75. I could see why this movie would be a flop in 75, because I'm going to sound really mean here, but I feel like those people like that were adults back then, they didn't get it. They didn't get life. They didn't get who they wanted to be. They secluded themselves of their true potential, and I just feel like they were less evolved and open than we are in this day and age, because seeing Frank and Bernard probably scared them. Like, people out there like that exist? Yeah, they do. And... If you opened your mind and were a little bit more accepting towards it, look how much fun that guy was having throughout the entire movie. Where if you're just a dweeb like Brad was, then obviously your life's not going to be very exciting. But even then, Brad in the movie, he explored himself and he allowed himself to get intimate with Frankenfurter, which, again, like literally, you can love and have fun with anybody, but I can definitely see why the 
I want to call them a, a nasty name back in the 70s because they were so hateful, and I just can't grasp that kind of hate. Go there, we... I, I'm not going to go there, but I could go on forever talking about how bad the 70s used to be with regards to hate, but... I, I appreciate this movie for what it is and what it does to people. A couple of quick positives. The, I think the casting is incredible. They all play it up with camp. They all knew they were going in knowing this was a parody of 50s and 60s movies. Even earlier, there's a lot of King Kong references and stuff like that. Tim Curry is amazing. He's an icon. He has done some incredible roles. Hopefully, we'll hit some of his other awesome movies like It and Clue and stuff like that. It doesn't matter. When the Man Passes, Rocky Horror Picture Show, Frankenfurter, these are the things people will remember most for. Uh, the set pieces, the special effects are pretty cheesy, but they go <laughs> for that. They but the bad. But the sets and costumes are really awesome. That I will give it. I did like the, the costumes and the, the practical, basically, effects of everything. But yeah, the, those lasers right at the end... Uh, Oh, I just don't want to talk about it. That's how bad they were. And my final positive, I think this movie has the greatest moral of any movie ever. It's simple. Don't dream it. Be it. This basically okay. tells you, if you don't want to be a part of the regular society, then be yourself. That doesn't mean just being gay, just being trans, just being bi. That means being shy, quirky, whatever you want to be. And I think that is so important. And a movie that's a flop cult film from 75 taught me that. So what are your negatives? And please take as much time as you have because I don't have any, many. Uh, the plot. Where was the plot? There was no plot. They, they got a flat tire. They went to some castle. And then suddenly they were having sex with everybody. Um, <laughs> they created a dude that was literally chipped out of stone, it looked like. He was so muscular. He forgot leg day, though. Like, his legs were so underdeveloped. Like, his upper body, magnificent. Legs, little, pee, like little to, legs. Be, <laughs> little like to be legs. desired. They just remind me of chicken legs, that's all. Uh, they were a little moist, like, thick <laughs> chicken legs. That was a nice size dress. Um, uh, the special effects, like I said, I, I, the, the cheap lightning effect, like, come on. The lightning then, looked good. The lasers no, looked good. No, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. All right. And then just some of the characters. Brad, every time he opened his mouth, I was just like, does this guy know what acting is? Like, it's camp literally. acting. He was so bad. No, I, he's like, acting bad. I could tell the others he's, were trying to act bad, but no. this guy was just like, he was trying so hard to be bad that he was just If you watch bad. Black and White, Science fiction films, they were that bad. Yeah, he I was get acting that, that bad. It's because nobody knew what they were doing back then. I'm not but gonna fight you on Brad. This guy oh, <laughs> Brad just literally graded me so much and every time he was on screen I just wanted to slap him. He was so annoying. But other than that, like yeah. I'm glad the music carried me through. I'll just I'll leave it there. The only negative I have really has nothing to do with the movie. Again, I'm Probably a bad judgment for the review because I'm reviewing this on sentimental stuff. The only negative I have is that this movie has a lot of adult themes. It goes to dark places without actually going there. It is very simplistic now. But I hate that when I go to video places or like Walmart where they sell it, sometimes you find this in the family section. Okay? <laughs> like, what? I. I was older what? when I saw it, but this, I have seen this in family viewing. <laughs> and I admit, it's probably not as racy as a lot of, like, some of the kids' movies that come out nowadays. <sighs> but there is still adult themes, and please make sure your kids are a little older when you watch that. That's my only negative, is that I don't like how we've homogenated this movie. This has some big, big themes, and they shouldn't be taken lightly. I would agree with that. I can't believe it's in the family section of Walmart. It, it can be. I've seen it in a couple places. Walmart does not sponsor this video, by the way, <laughs> in case you're wondering. And we don't get money from them anyhow, so it's all good. Now, I did... Uh, thank you for saying that at least you understand why people, uh, you know, that don't feel like they fit in would embrace this movie. That I'm going to forgive you that you didn't like this movie just because I get that you get that. And that means a lot to me, because that shows you at least 
understand why it's so culturally important. You made a point. Uh, you were saying, like, right before Frankenfurter was introduced, you, you said, people were doing this. And yeah. little did you know, moments after, when Frankenfurter was introduced, your life would change. Yeah. And you know what? Like, if it weren't for this movie, maybe like, this guy right here wouldn't be the Devlin that we all know and love. So I appreciate this movie for that as well. Thank you for that. So let me hear it. Maybe I don't want to hear it, but <laughs> what's your score on one to five? Uh, be brutal. One and, and a half. half. Oh, man. One and a half. I, I, the music saved it, and Tim Curry saved it, but I cannot give it any more than one and a half. One and a half. Cannot go any higher than that, even if you paid me. All right. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. I know it's got some problems, but just based on everything it's done for me, the amount of times I've seen it, the joy it brings me, my first five stars here. I'm going what? five stars. It's one of my top ten all-time favorite oh movies. Oh, my God. It really? is five stars. I told five you. Five big ones? You may have given your favorite movie less, but I do give five stars, and this one's five stars. I give up. I give up. It's done. It's over. This is ridiculous. Five stars. Anyhow, that's our review for the Rocky oh Horror Picture gosh. Show. If you have never seen this movie, give it a shot and see if you're on Team Damien or Team Devlin. And hey, it doesn't matter what you feel. You're on both our teams if you were watching this. And we thank you for that. Get it? Both teams? Hey. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching. Like us. Subscribe. We want to keep doing this for you guys. And we love having you along with us. And let us know what you want to see next, what you think we're doing, by giving us a comment. As always, we'll see you next time. So give yourself over to absolute pleasure. Don't you see the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Let's do the